but we don't need to talk too deeply about why you need a cleaning tool, um, but these items do go in your ear. Hi, I'm Jamie Hernandez, and this is The Ins and Outs with Mackie, a show about awesome gear and awesome people. We'll be bringing you musicians, engineers, podcasters, streamers, and sometimes the occasional Mackoid. Today, we are making good on that promise by bringing in Mackie's very own Matt Heron. Matt is one of the product managers of Mackie who developed the MP360 and MP460 in your monitor series, which we'll be discussing today. Expanding our MP line was no easy task, so we called upon some friends. So we're also going to be joined by Andrew Bellavia, the director of marketing for Knowles, whose drivers have brought Mackie's MP series into a whole new league. Welcome to the show, Matt and Andy. That's great to be here. Thanks. <laughs> How Hi, you guys Jamie. doing? We're doing good. Doing well, thanks. So, um, well, let's get started. Let's dive right into it. Andy, let's start by talking uh, to our guests a little bit more about what you do for Knowles and um, who you are. Okay, glad to. Knowles has actually a long history in this arena. Uh, Hugh Knowles uh, invented the microbalance armature originally for hearing aids, and uh, Knowles is still a hearing health company. But about, oh, since the early 80s, people started taking those small balance armature drivers from hearing aids and adapting them to in-ear monitors for the same reasons they were always used, small size and very precise sound reproduction. Now you fast forward a little bit, we've developed a lot of customized drivers specifically for the in-ear market, and I'm responsible for bringing those to market, uh, in-ear monitors uh, and consumer earphones as well as my business. Awesome, thank you for that. Matt, um, can you please share with our guests what you do for Mackie and maybe even some of the products that you've been uh, behind? Sure. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, I'm uh, so I'm I'm a product manager here at Mackie. So I I develop product, right? Uh, and mostly I do mixers. So the Pro FX line uh, that we launched last year was really really awesome and super excited about. Um, and uh, and I also do in ear monitors. Um, and I also do our digital mixer platform. So we've you know we've got a lot a lot of stuff that I'm I'm after right now. But uh, IEMs are why we're here today, and I'm, I'm I'm most excited about those. Actually, those are the newest coolest product, and that tends to, as a product manager to be the one that you're most excited about is the newest but uh but yeah we're, we're always really excited and uh we're really excited to work with Knowles and, and we're excited that uh Andrew has uh given us some of his time today absolutely agree with that I can't wait to learn more about this relationship so let's dive right into the Mackie Knowles relationship um starting with Matt can you first start off why uh Mackie entered the inner monitor category well, uh, actually, we uh, we got our start, uh, you know, uh, just a couple of years back in 2018 is kind of when we dropped the first set of IEMs. Um, really, it's it's kind of Mackie's DNA to look at a market and find out where where there's there's opportunity for us to bring value to our customers and maybe bring technology down to a price point where uh, more users can get access. Um, I think that that's that's definitely with our, our our very first mixer. That was the whole goal. Is you know, live sound was incredibly expensive and. And it was really hard for small bands to do a show on their own without having to buy a very huge, expensive PA. And, and it's just, it was really next to impossible. And really, the small, compact line mixers that, that Maxi, Mackie started out with really started that whole thing off. And it brought it down to a price point where folks could, could get into the, um, uh, the, the, the product line and get into the technology, um, but not, you know, they didn't have, you know, uh, a large scale, uh, you know, uh, bar or club, uh, maybe uh, uh, to start with, you know, as far as their uh, 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 investment. So let's talk about how you and Andy met. Can we talk to Andy about, you know, when you first met Matt and how that relationship, start, relationship started off with you? Certainly. Well, we met uh, as, as this line was being conceived, and, and I really appreciate the relationship. I appreciate, I appreciate what Mackie is doing because another aspect of the in-ear monitors and why it's important to bring those down to local musicians is for hearing protection. So when you're on stage wearing in-ear monitors, you have much less risk of damage your hearing. But you have to make in-ear monitors available at the level of local musicians, both, you know, where they buy their other gear and also a matter of affordability so that they can enjoy the same level of hearing protection and preserve their hearing 
for a longer period of time. I, and from my point of view, um, our, our relationship with Knowles uh, really got started. Um, we, we wanted to work with Knowles um, uh, for, for, for a long time. And in fact, uh, we, we were really excited when the opportunity came up. Um, actually, uh, uh, it was just NAM this, this last year. And it's just that's part of the magic of NAM, right? And sometimes you just meet just the right person at the right time. And it, it kind of got things started. And um, to be honest, we, we did a lot of work on the voicing of these models long before we were able to bring Knowles in. Um, and wow. with Knowles, it was, it was just, it just the sound came to life and it was like, ah, that's, you know, we got our signature profile sound with, with their hardware. So it was, it was a really a, a perfect match and it couldn't have come at a better moment in time in the project from a, from a project point of view. You know, it's so long ago, seemingly, I completely forgot about NAM. <laughs> Which really is, is, it was, you know, January was a, was a period where I was traveling really continuously from January to mid-February. And I, at the end of it all, I thought to myself, oh, I need a break from this constantly being on the road. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks. You, you know, be what careful you what for. you wish for, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, you know, but, but thinking back to NAM, that really was a great meeting and, uh, in fact, uh, you know, since then, I thought we worked really well together getting the drivers uh, to you. And, of course, the acoustic design is fantastic. You've really delivered, a, you know, a, a musician-centric uh, set of IEMs that very faithfully reproduce the sound. And so it's been great watching this come to fruition from January until now. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I can totally agree. Um, and I know that process wasn't an easy process, Matt. You know, you said you spent a year and a half trying to develop the right sound for these um, in your monitors. Um, how did you know that it was Knowles that would help that journey come to an end? I mean, what was the, the breaking point that you put those in your ears and you were like, this is this is it? I don't know. The closest thing I can explain is it's, it's kind of like uh, we were we were we had been auditioning for focuses and uh and we we, we got to to drive in a, like a bmw and it's like oh oh this is i, I see the difference now uh, it's kind of the way it was uh, i love just, that just the, the quality was just so so much better than than a lot of the other materials we were working with and, and we're trying to do it on our own and that's another piece of the puzzle that i think that really comes is the as andy talked about the history of Knowles. they've spent a long time figuring this out and so it was amazing to be able to kind of piggyback on that technology we kind of knew how we wanted it to sound but we needed we just needed a little help getting there and and it was definitely definitely the right partner it was the right choice i agree with that and for people who um aren't familiar with mackie you know as someone who works i work inside of headquarters with matt and he's while we were trying to develop these i mean he was putting them in everybody's ears that was at the <laughs> at headquarters right matt yeah. and and asking everybody um how do you like this give me notes do you like it with this kind of music do you like it with this kind of music i mean we really we really want to make sure we find the perfect product for our customers, and we do not um, take any shortcuts there. So I, I like I like to talk about that process so that people can know what really goes into that. Yeah, and developing an in-ear monitor is really a complex art because when you put something in your ear, you're going to get a totally different sound than, say, a loudspeaker. And so the sound, the perceived sound that you want the person to hear isn't exactly the same as what is coming out of the in-ear monitor because it's the relationship of the in-ear monitor to a person's ear. And so you really have to start with the drivers. And, and I appreciate uh, what you said about our drivers because for in-ear monitors specifically, we've really been working on them since the 80s and trying to get the sound just so to deliver the best experience. But then it also takes the, the mechanical and acoustic tuning of the in-ear monitor itself to make sure you're delivering the sound you actually want. The person actually hears what you intend them to hear. A lot of work that goes into the total product design. Totally. Um, so speaking of that, you know, you said you've been developing these since the 80s, right? How are we able to provide these for people at such a low cost? Maybe that's a question for Matt. Uh -huh. Well, I think Andy probably can can speak to that. I mean, it's just like almost any technology. I think as technology leaps forward, it, the costs kind of come down. Um, when you initially, I'm sure, uh, when 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 uh, Andy and they were developing the first first generation of these products, they were probably a lot more expensive than they are yeah. today. Would you agree with that, Andy? Well, yeah. I mean, over time, the manufacturing cost of anything comes down, and also the the precision in production as well. So, you know, you develop modern process control methods, the yields get better, they get more consistent. You can uh, manufacture them at higher rates for, you know, 
uh, more smoothly and more consistently. That's really true in any technology. Uh, so that's the, the driver portion of it for sure. The rest of the manufacturing that goes around in your monitors as well, for example, the plastic pieces, the cables, and all the rest of it, you can speak to that. But, uh, you know, the end result is, is that now, yes, uh, local and mid-tier musicians can get good quality in your monitors and uh, both, you know, get an accurate reproduction of their mix while they're performing and also the hearing protection. So you're telling me you don't have to be on American Idol to um, justify using IMs? Well, no, because... Uh, <laughs> A musician at any level you know, should be concerned about their hearing over the long term. Absolutely. And also, you're, with an in-ear monitor, you're going to get a more accurate mix while you're performing than the wedges out in front of the stage. I 100% agree with that, Andy. Uh, exactly what you're saying. Hearing protection is huge, and I think awareness for hearing protection has definitely elevated, I would say, over the last 10 years or so. I mean, uh, I... I'm, you know, when I was in <laughs> playing music, I would say hearing protection wasn't always what we were thinking of. Um, and I think that's something that's definitely newer that that's coming out that, that a lot of folks are, are focusing on. Even folks that I know that do DJ work, I'm seeing IMs used in the DJ world. Have you noticed that as well? I have seen some of them, which is really interesting because, you you know, typically headphones were, were the thing to wear, but then you'd also see DJs, you know, popping one side off and only having the headphone on one side. And, and of course, that does you no good in, you know, for hearing protection at all. Yeah. And, and modern in-ear monitors are so comfortable that you can wear them for hours on end and not notice that they're there. And so, yeah, for DJs as well as musicians, uh, there's a lot of value there. Lightweight, very comfortable, small unobtrusive and accurate sound it's the way to go yeah well and i found i mean and i mean this isn't a, a pro use case but uh, i use them quite often at home uh working from home uh, i don't know if anyone lives with people what does <laughs> I that do, mean and cats <laughs> uh and uh, i will tell you it's sometimes it's nice to have that isolation um just just to kind of bring down the the house noise you know with uh with uh, fellow denizens of your your domicile <laughs> Well, Mackie has definitely brought some affordability to this whole, to, to in-ear monitors, and that's really exciting. Um, why do you think we need them now, Matt? Uh, I think it's it's mainly because the technology has hit a point where, as, as Andy and I have been discussing, I mean, the, the fidelity of these products is so amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm actually, uh, you know, I was just talking to someone the other day, why don't we do more mixing on IEMs? Um, you know, why do we waste, you know, we have air in between us and our loudspeakers. Why, why aren't we doing more mixes on IMs? You, you have the clarity there. You have the sound stage. Um, you get the noise isolation. So you're only hearing what, what is actually being recorded. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted. I haven't tried it quite yet, but I'm, I'm thinking about mixing a few songs on IMs and see what happens. I, I, I don't know why other than we just haven't done it a lot before. This is true. What would you think yeah. the advantages would be to using IEMs over um, over the ear headphones for that? purpose? Oh, well, I don't know. For me, it's it's fatigue. Over-the-ear headphones are, are wonderful, but my top of my head gets a little sore, and um, also my ears get hot. So oh, yeah. I think it's more of a personal taste thing, because I'll be honest, I don't think IEMs are for everybody. Some folks don't like putting things in their ears. Hey, I understand that. I don't like putting things in my eye. So, you know, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point, too. You know, as someone who works in the field and have, has gone on an in near monitor run with uh, customers and employees, I feel like a lot of the problem stems from people not being able to put them on correctly or find the right size. Do, would you agree with that? I, I would say, yeah. I mean, I'm sure Andy can speak to this too, but uh, getting a seal, a good seal uh, for the IM is probably the most important part of the process. Um, getting it in your ear to where it's comfortable and it actually forms a seal so you're not getting any bleed from the outside. Um, I would say that's probably the number one complaint. I've had you know, folks say, wow, it just sounds really thin and, and tinny. And I'm like, there's, there's two, two low frequency drivers in there that shouldn't sound tinny. It should sound good and full <laughs> in the low end. But, um, you know, and more often than not, it's finding out, oh, well, you know, um, and I think it's, and I think it comes down to this and I'll, and I'll, and this is just my theory is most of the IEMs come out, uh, come, uh, pre prepackaged with the medium size. We do it too. I think most people do. Um, but not everyone's a medium, but we all, kind of like to think we're medium, uh, but some of us have smaller ears and we need a little bit smaller uh, or a little bit bigger, you know? And so I would, I would, if I could say anything, I would push anyone who, who's trying a pair of IDMs uh, 
find the right size and the right type of tip for you. That's why we offer so many choices um, in our packages. Is you know, you, you, some people love foam. Some people like the silicone. I'm I'm a big fan of the silicone personally. Some people like the multi flange. You know, where it's got multiple uh, little little nodules. Um, but I would say that that definitely definitely the high focus uh, for everyone is find the right tip for you um, and know that. Everyone's a little different, and whatever size tip that you that you need, that's the right size for you, and, and go for it. And and that's you're going to have the best experience. Have you had similar uh, things, Andy? Would you agree? Absolutely. In fact, you'll even read earphone reviews where one reviewer says, "Oh, they're thin. The base is lifeless," and another you know interviewer will say, "Love the base, warm and filling without being overpowering." Same earphone. Yeah. And you know exactly what it is. But you all, the opposite is also true. And and the the simplest thing about educating a person how to find the right tip for the in ear monitors, listen to something with a good baseline, and you'll know when you get the tips right. They'll both feel comfortable, and you're going to really hear that baseline going. And and I've even known people who had to use two different sizes, you know, one on the left ear and one on the right ear. But once point. you find the right tips, you can wear them for hours, quite comfortable, and the sound is really nice. Yeah, totally agree with that. And how do you approach that? You know, when you're, when uh, Matt, Matt's going to go ahead and do an unboxing, you know, later on, but um, how do you start that process? Uh, do you, do you go through all the different sizes starting from smallest to biggest or, you know, what is, what is the best um, way to go about that? Well, I would just start with the, I mean, it's good to start with the mediums. That gives you a good midpoint and you know, you know, just medium silicones because they tend to be the most traditional and anyone who's used earbuds before um, uh, can can have a familiarity with that particular tip type um, before you jump into foam and maybe some of these other options. Um, but that's a great place to start. And if you find it, you know, feeling very loose, maybe you need a little bit larger. Um, if you don't like the feel of the silicone in ear, try foam. Some people find foam much more comfortable. Um, I'm like I said, I, I, it, the variety is is the key, and, and comfortability is key because you're going to be wearing these for long periods of time. Um, you're going to want to you're going to want to make sure they fit really securely, and they're not going to come out um, or, yeah. or, or or dislodge themselves while you're you're singing or or talking. And you might even use different ear tips depending on where you're at at the moment. That's I know some point. people will choose foam on stage because you get better isolation with foam. But then for casual listening where you might be popping them in and out, then you go with the silicone tips. Yeah. That's very good. Um, good tips. Tips for tips uh, that you, <laughs> you guys are, are giving us. Um, Maggie's... Um, in your monitors also come with a hip tips guide to help you along the way with that. So I'm sure Matt will um, be talking through that in his unboxing as well. Um, yeah, that's exciting. Did you want to talk any more to each individual um, M MP, Matt? You know, you have two exciting new series coming out. You have the MP360 and the MP460s. I am a huge fan of the MP240s myself, which was released, you know, before. But, you know, what can we look forward to these two new models? Yeah. Um, so obviously with our last gen, we, we started out with just dynamic drivers and then we had a, a hybrid where we had one balanced armature and, and a dynamic combined together. So this is our first foray into a full, uh, balanced armature loadout. So we're really excited, um, for this, this opportunity. And so we've got our 360 and our 460, um, with the MP360. And I think that what I can do is I, I think I'll give you guys the loadout and maybe Andy can tell us about what, what, the, what's the magic, um, here. Sounds so um, in our 360, we actually have, um, and Andy, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, we have the 30017, also known as the, the TWFK. So the Tango Whiskey Foxtrot Kilo. Um, and that's combined, that's paired up uh, with our, our uh, with the 22955 or the CI. Is that right, Andrew? That's correct. And yeah. the CI is the woofer, and the TWFK is a combination mid-range and tweeter joined together. Awesome. Yeah, and, and um, that particular combination, um, it's a very powerful so combination, correct, I have found. Um, uh, I really loved the sound. Um, what, what, uh, do you, um, obviously, this is something that you guys oftentimes package together. What, why is there so much synergy, Andy, between these two, two driver sets? Well, really, the way we've approached balanced armature design is a lot like loudspeakers, where rather than just having one giant speaker, right, you have specially designed woofers and mid-range and tweeters, each one which is really best at what it does. 
And by combining those, you'll get an overall better sound than just trying to replicate it with one single unit. So you've got the CI, which is a woofer, and then the TWFK is a mid-range tweeter a dual unit that's pre-combined together. So you really get good full-spectrum sound out of the three units. Again, like a loudspeaker. Yeah, I mean, and I've noticed that as well. I mean, you just get just incredible clarity. Um, the soundstage uh, for our 360s is just really wonderful. Um, I'm I'm a kind of a I'm a reverb guy, so I, I just I love reverb tails in in tunes. Uh, that's one of my favorite things. Is I, I just I chase that really good reverb. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Brukowski. Uh, I, I like Lexicon. Um, I'm just I'm a reverb nerd. Um, <laughs> but uh, and so I really like that with the 360s. I feel like the soundstage is really really open. Um, but we. We, 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 so we, we did utilize the TWFK, so we, we utilized that in both models. But the one big difference uh, with the MP460s, we added in, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. <laughs> I don't know if you would say it, but the, <laughs> the, the, the HODVTEC, or the HODVTEC, or the 31618, uh, uh, is what we paired um, instead of the CI. Can you maybe give us a little bit of a rundown of what's the difference between the CI and the, and the HODVTEC? <laughs> yeah, be glad to. I know that's a that's a mouthful. It actually means something, but I won't explain it here. Okay. Uh, you know, the naming people started getting carried away trying to define what the thing is with initials. Uh, but it's actually a dual woofer, and it has a different character to the base than the single woofer does. Uh, and my personal preference is for the HOD VTEC, between the CI and the HOD VTEC. Uh, but there are other people who lean the other way. I mean, they're both really excellent woofers, but they just have a different sound characteristic. And so for people shopping one or the other, uh, it's it's really a matter of picking the sound signature, which is, you know, just really most pleasing to your individual ear. But I personally prefer the dual woofer. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I, I think that I, my preference is definitely for the 460, um, which includes that uh, 31618, which is a little bit easier to say, um, uh, uh, dual driver loadout. Um, but I think that we, we achieve, I mean, you, you've, you've auditioned both. I mean, we achieved quite a bit of, of low end out of both models um, and both have very, very clear high end. Um, um, the three-way crossover in both has been completely tuned to work with our capsules combined with your drivers. Um, so I think that we've really done a good job of, of, of creating that sound stage. But yeah, you get, it, it definitely is a kind of a, a taste um, between the two um, folks, yeah, for folks to choose from. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I was really impressed with the 360. I mean, it goes low. And in my mind, when you're looking for a musician style in your monitor, you don't want any one part of the spectrum jumping out at you. In fact, you really want to try and deliver to the listener what was intended in the studio. And so you don't want the bass to roll off. You don't necessarily want it too heavy, too punchy, uh, too uh, muddy in particular, but you do want it to go down low in both the 360 and the 460, do exactly that. I love listening to music with a good bass line in it uh, with either one. Yeah, well, and one of Jamie and my favorite is a band called Purity Ring, and, and I will tell you, they, they just do a great job of representing that low end for that particular band. You keep you keep mentioning types of music. Do you have advice on how to? Um, I know you said find something with a good bass, but do you do you make like a headphone list when you're trying to decide what you're gonna uh, choose, or how does that work for you, Andy? I do. Well, I'll, I'll look for I'll look for music that has a lot of di different instrumentation in it, and uh, as well as vocals, so that you're really getting the full spectrum. And of course, probably the single most popular song for doing that is Hotel California. Uh, but I actually have another favorite I like, which is uh, Mumford & Sons' version of The Boxer. Oh, okay. Because Mumford with the banjo and all that, but then there's a, a bass line running underneath it. And, of course, you've got his vocals, which, you know, uh, really, I mean, he's a stellar singer, uh, but also one who will give up an inferior inner monitor right away because there are some lines in that song that'll go sibilant if you've got a trouble tuning wrong, for example. Yeah. So that's another favorite of mine. 
what I would recommend, uh, and what I always recommend is, 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 I mean, I think Andy and I are both kind of in the audio file or the, the community where we, we have these like reference tracks that, that you just have to use, uh, um, uh, Steely Dan and, and, and then there's these, just these songs that we hear <laughs> at every, yeah, right. We hear it every, every trade show we go to. And so I think that there's <laughs> those, and I think that because we've grown so familiar with those tunes, they are great reference tracks for us. And what I would say to people who are maybe just starting out and they, you know, they don't have this, you know, this kind of repertoire, pick, pick a song that you know really well, a song that you've listened to in your, your parents' car, in, on a boom box, in multiple sets of headphones, maybe on CD and uh, MP3. And you've, you've just heard and heard a lot. You know, I think that that is definitely uh, what I would recommend is, is pick those albums that you're really pick the albums that you're um, familiar with because that's going to be, be the decision. You're, you know, I remember hearing this and this doesn't sound right to me. And that's where you're going to find things that are going to match or not match your particular sound profile. Um, at least that's how I, uh, what I recommend sure. to folks, I'm, I, you know, cause I, we could recommend the hotel California. It's a great tune. Um, but if you've never heard it before, it may not be as valuable that's a good point. You know, and a lot of the times, I, I, I actually wasn't a user of in-ear monitors uh, before I started working with Maddie, with Mackie. And I've actually learned to appreciate a lot of my favorite bands even more after listening to some of my favorite songs on in-ear monitors. Because now I'm like, oh, I didn't know there was panning there. And I didn't know they did this. And you hear a lot of little extra thing, things, you know, that, that you didn't hear with your AirPods or whatever headphones you have um, currently, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you are, you're going into a whole new realm, I will say. I mean, we've, I've, I've had folks, you know, I, I've seen uh, people try your near monitors for the first time and just be completely shocked and blown up. away and their light will, I, I mean, they just, whoa, holy crud. I didn't, you know, and I've even done that, you know, I mean, as, and it's really funny as we've gone down this, 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 this journey of IEMs, you know, starting with the MP 120s, I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. 220s, oh, that's, that's pretty good. You know, and we're uh, 240s, oh, that's pretty good. And now we're at the 460s and I was like, what was I thinking? You know, back there, you know, I mean, it's just, you hear more and more and more and you hear these little, little things that maybe the artists put in like little lines or little, you know, again, reverb tales. I, I'm a, I'm a nerd, but, but, you know, you just, you listen to the end of the, the, the verse and you're just, Oh, okay. That, that was a really cool thing they did there. Uh, um, production has definitely become a, a huge focus for me as well. Um, as I've gotten to see in here, hear more detail, um, in the music I listen to. Well, thank you for that. Thank you guys both. And I, I want to congratulate you both on such fine products that we've created from this relationship. Congratulations to you guys. Well, thank you. Really, <laughs> congratulations to Mackie because uh, you've, you've taken what we believe are really, really nice, good, clean sounding drivers, you know, really premium sounding drivers and turning them into an in-ear monitor. That's really something else. I think we've definitely made history with that. For Appreciate sure. that. I'm excited. I'm, I, I say we keep it going. The, so the Octa driver, is that what we do next, Andy? Let's do yes, it. Yes. Talk about the Octa Sounds driver. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> and now Matt is going to do a live unboxing of our new series. Hi there. Matt Heron, product manager for Mackie. So without further ado, boom. MP460. So uh, obviously we uh, kept the same package as the last series, but we've updated all the artwork. Um, same really cool metal uh, uh, magnetic clasp here. So that pops right out, um, which gives you a lot more information of what comes inside the box here. Um, opening it up, right? So we've got We've got tons of really cool information on this side, how you can use your IEMs. And then over here, we've got the IEMs themselves up top. And then below, we've got that hard molded case. So I've already cut the side here, so you'd have to cut that little um, anti-theft protection. Um, but let's get started. Let's, let's dig in. Let's see what's inside. So first up, we've got the, the IEMs themselves, right? So um, it's a uh, hard molded little, little uh, plastic shell. We've got our black PCB. We've got the uh, the really cool Running Man logo there, as you guys can see in silver, um, right there on the side. Standard. This are are actually our wide bore tips, as you can see, it's much wider than the standard tip. Uh, up next, let's go ahead and let's see what else comes in the box. We've got um, our handy little 
tips for tips guide. You know, the most, the most difficult stuff about getting the tips on, uh, on how to get a proper fit, we just went ahead and we compiled all that information. It's right here in the box. You don't have to go online or anything. You can just uh, look at this little thing. It's a really, really great handy little piece of uh, paper that comes with each model. Um, we've got a great little uh, uh, owner's manual that comes in. It's, it's very tiny. Um, as you can see, it's really a small guy. Um, but uh, it's got uh, all the information that you would need in there um, in actually a few different languages, which is kind of fun. So uh, if you really need to uh, um, check out the information in French, we've got it. It comes in, in, in there as well. Um, so that's really great. Um, lots of great uh, information that comes with each, each model, but not exactly the fun stuff. Let's talk about accessories. So we've got the, uh, the hard molded um, little case here. Right, so um, it's got a little carabiner on the side. It's got the uh, the Running Man logo. Um, they're great for the IEMs. They keep them good and protected. So if you want, you can toss them into your travel case, and you're good to go, no matter where you might be using your IEMs. So another really cool accessory that comes with this series um, is you get the you obviously you get the silver MMCX cable, which is great, right? So uh, that's that's usable for for 90% of your use cases. Um, but what else we added as a little bonus? This actually is an MMCX control and mic cable. Um, so you can plug this into your phone or your computer and you plug your IEMs, it's still a standard MMCX connector, and it gives you inline um, control um, of your calling, um, also gives you a microphone. So if you need to use this for a hands-free, I know a lot of folks are working from home now and if you wanted a good set of IEMs, but you're like, hey, you know, I'd like to use it in other circumstances, we've included this little cable too. Also what's new, it's kind of cool, is this little cleaning tool. We don't need to talk too deeply about why you need a cleaning tool, um, but these items do go in your ear. So um, sometimes uh, you might need one of these. Finally, uh, let's talk about tips, right? So we've got tons of tips in here. So we've got uh, we've got triple flange in three different sizes, right? We've got the uh, standard silicone in three different sizes, again. And we've got the... Uh, wide bore silicone so it comes with a medium um, on the IEM itself so you just have the large and the small and then three sizes of foam so the foam classic um, people like these for for maximum isolation um, some people find the foam more comfortable than the silicone feel free to mix and match again you want to find uh, what works best for you also uh, of course it comes with our standard um, quarter inch gold plated um, eighth inch to uh, uh, quarter inch stereo adapter, um, pretty standard, but this will allow you to plug into a lot of our Mackie mixers, um, anything with a more pro quarter inch um, output. And finally, we got this really cool little cleaning cloth. Again, I with the cleaning stuff, um, I'm not going to go too too detailed, but um, sometimes it's nice to be able to um, uh, polish your IEMs, you know, and it's a little bit of a, a, a bonus uh, compared to the last generation. We've added a lot more accessories. I'm really, really excited for these guys. Um, I, I really appreciate um, everyone who watches this. Um, again, these are the quad balance armature drivers. We also have the 360s, which is going to give you three uh, balanced armature drivers, and then the MP320s, which is kind of a cool addition um, as well. And those are actually all balanced, but it gives you the three-way crossover and gives you um, uh, a triple driver set. So all really, really cool lineup. We have we have tons more information online. Um, but yeah, I appreciate everyone taking the time to watch this unboxing, and I hope everyone has an amazing day. Well, after all of that delicious knowledge, I think it's time to ask some fun one-off questions. What do you guys think? You game for that? Sure. All right. Well, let's start with Andy. Andy, Matt says that Knowles is the Hemi of IMs. What would you compare them to? <laughs> oh, I like that, especially because uh, in younger days, I had a 73 Dodge Challenger. Oh, wow. So I appreciate that <laughs> Hemi reference. I'm going to stick with that. You're going to stick with that. All right. Andy, true or false, MP stands for Matt's product. <laughs> I like it. Um, no. Matt, can you answer that question? Uh, it's Mackie Phones, I think, is, is the, uh, the moniker. I like Matt's product. Um, Matt, what's the most unconventional way you've used your monitors or have seen them be used? Ooh. Um, okay, so the thing I like them for that <laughs> they're not necessarily intended for, I love them for airplanes um, because it blocks out. Uh, and if I create the seal before we take off, my ears don't get plugged. 
because it creates a vacuum inside my head. Um, and I can go for a full trip to China uh, and not have the pain of, you know, sometimes the, the pressure of the cabin. Um, and I can wear them for the entire, again, the entire trip to China, 12 hours, um, and not get fatigued. So I think that's probably my use case that's not normal per se, but uh, it works really well. <laughs> the, the, the noise isolation and the, uh, and the, the creating a seal in my head uh, is, is a wonderful experience. That noise isolation is legit. I have um, used them to drown out people snoring in my house. I'm not going to mention who, but Andy, what's the most unique application your drivers have been used for? The most unique application. We actually have a medical application where the drivers use to help measure precisely the flow of insulin uh, in a body-worn insulin delivery system for people who are diabetic. That's amazing. That's awesome. Another one's also medical related uh, where they're <laughs> put inside uh, defibrillators, in, in, internally implanted defibrillators, uh, in which if the defibrillator has a malfunction, it will make a noise that the person can hear from within their body to know that there's a problem. That's, uh, defibrillators and pacemakers. That's amazing. Matt, if you didn't work for Mackey, what industry would you work in? Hmm. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Like I'm an audio guy from way back in tech. I mean, if I, I don't know, I love product management, so I'd probably be doing, doing more product management, maybe, uh, I don't know, in a different industry, but I, 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 I love audio and, and that's, I mean, I found my home here. I've been, you know, in, in bands and, and getting, getting the opportunity to, to make the gear that I used for most of my youth is, is the coolest opportunity ever. So I think it's exciting for our listeners to hear too, that the, the product managers are musicians themselves that Mackie. Yes. I mean, uh, capable internet people can find me with, you know, foot long black mohawk and a bass guitar <laughs> and there's, there's photos out there. Uh, nice. I call it my past life. <laughs> Andy, same question. If you didn't work for Knowles, what industry would you work in? Or would it, would it be something totally different? Or would you just be doing the well, same thing? Well, you know, it would be, I've, I've been on the component supplier side of audio for a long time, but uh, it would almost be unfair to say I would do something else in audio. I've also been a car guy forever. So, oh, wow. Yeah, I would, I would be in automotive design if I were picking something completely different. That's so awesome. Well, thank you, guys. I think that was fun. Um, did you guys have anything else you wanted to share with us? Any products we can look forward to? Um, any more Knowles Mackey relationships in the near future? Well, we've got some new things cooking that, of course, we're going to share as soon as they're ready. So we're always trying to improve and always trying to bring a different and better experience to our customers. But I also want to thank you for not asking me what I would name peanut butter because I couldn't come up with a name for that <laughs> one at all. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, I like to mix them up. It's better when it's a when it's a surprise question. So you guys, you guys are good sports, <laughs> and I really appreciate that. Um, Matt, did you have anything you wanted to lead off on? Thanks everyone for watching and uh, look forward to hearing everyone's feedback uh, on the new series. And, uh, you know, uh, we're excited for the clear capsules. We're excited for the partnership with Knowles. It really took us to the next level and I'm really excited um, to be, be offering them finally um, after all this time. And also we have a lot of great accessories that you've showed us. Um, yeah. Lots of extra cables and tips. And I mean, you can't go wrong with these. You're, you'll, you'll be able to find one that works for you. So yeah, again, hopefully. Yeah, definitely. Again, thank you guys. Thank you, Matt and Andy. You guys were awesome. Again, I'm Jamie Hernandez, and this is The Ins and Outs with Mackie, a show about awesome gear and awesome people. We'll be bringing you musicians, engineers, podcasters, streamers, and sometimes the occasional Mackoid. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for upcoming episodes.